Are you someone that takes ibuprofen on a regular basis to deal with your muscle aches or headaches? If so, you definitely want to watch this video because what you know about ibuprofen may be harming your kidneys. My name is Dr. Taranella, and today we're diving into the potential harmful effects of a common pain reliever known as ibuprofen. I'm going to share with you some of my clinical experience and research on how much, when, and why ibuprofen can negatively affect your kidneys. As I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and this channel is all about helping you understand and optimize your health. If you're liking these videos, please click on the like and subscribe to continue getting videos like this. All right, let's jump into this video. So in this video, we want to look at the truth behind ibuprofen and the kidneys. And ibuprofen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. It's over-the-counter, so it's a household name that's used for pain relief of all kinds. But regular and consistent use can significantly impact your kidneys. So the truth behind ibuprofen and kidneys is that it can damage your kidneys. But how much do you need to take in order for this damage or problems to occur with your kidneys. We're definitely going to look at that, but first let's look at how ibuprofen affects the kidneys so we can better understand how these effects can occur in someone. So ibuprofen has its anti-inflammatory effects by inhibiting the enzyme cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2, also known as COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitors. These enzymes play a crucial role in the production of chemicals called prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are lipid molecules or lipid compounds that are derived from specific fatty acids in the cell membranes. All of our cells have a membrane around them, and these fatty acids are important in many physiological processes, including the regulation of your kidney function. So in the kidneys, prostaglandins help to maintain adequate blood flow, the renal artery, blood flow to the kidneys, which is going to allow you to have a normal and consistent filtration rate known as glomerular filtration rate, as well as sodium and water balance, excretion, and also reabsorption of those things as needed. If you don't have enough blood flowing to those, then the kidneys can't actually do its job, let alone the kidneys themselves are not getting the blood flow as well. So prostaglandin E2, also known as PGE2, is the most abundant prostaglandin in the kidneys, and it acts to dilate those blood vessels to increase the blood flow to promote the natural process of the kidneys, which is retention of the things that we want to keep and excretion of the things that we don't want to keep. So PGE2 also helps protect the kidneys during states of reduced blood flow or dehydration by maintaining adequate filtration rate and also maintaining adequate perfusion of the kidneys themselves. So when ibuprofen comes along and inhibits the COX-2 enzyme, this enzyme is essential for the production of that PGE2, which is allowing for that artery to dilate. And inhibition of the PGA2 can lead to reduced renal blood flow and reduced filtration in the kidneys. And it can also lead to impairment in the excretion of the things that need to go out, as well as holding on to the things that we want to hold on to, like water and sometimes specific electrolytes like potassium. Ultimately, if this problem goes on long enough or persistently enough, it's going to lead to an acute kidney injury. And sometimes it can also lead to a more chronic kidney injury, which we're going to look at. There are other prostaglandins involved with kidney injury due to ibuprofen and other similar NSAIDs, but the predominant effect or predominant prostaglandin is attributed to the PGE2 because it leads to the vasoconstriction and decreased blood flow to the kidneys. So let's look at some studies and situations that might lead to acute and chronic kidney injury. Acute kidney injury is a sudden episode of kidney failure or damage that happens within a few hours or days. And a study published in Nephrology Dialysis Transplant found that NSAID use, including ibuprofen, is associated with an increased risk of acute kidney injury. Even short-term use at doses as low as 600 milligrams to 1200 milligrams per day could lead to acute kidney injury in susceptible individuals, like those with dehydration, heart failure, or existing kidney issues. And again, that's because there's already a decreased flow to those kidneys. Typically, these kinds of doses are not going to lead to that, but 
if you're particularly dehydrated or already have some kind of heart issue, kidney issue going on, you definitely need to be more careful with your use of ibuprofen and other NSAIDs. Well, let's look at chronic kidney injury. So chronic kidney disease is characterized by a gradual loss of kidney function over many, many months or even years. Research published in the Clinical Journal of American Society of Nephrology suggests that long-term use of NSAIDs like ibuprofen can contribute to chronic kidney disease development. Specifically, doses ranging from 200 to 400 milligrams taken one to three times a day over an extended period of time have been implicated in the progression or more rapid progression of kidney damage. And this is over the duration of two to three years. And of course, higher doses in stronger types of medications will increase this risk more. And just think about it, if you already are on the path just by way of aging, if you're already on the path of kidney disease, maybe you have your glomerular filtration rate is no longer in the 80s or 90s, it's in the low 60s, and then you start taking ibuprofen on a regular basis while you're decreasing the ability of the body to provide healthy nutrients to the kidneys, which eventually will lead to those kidney cells not being able to perform as well as they otherwise would with adequate supply of blood, oxygen, and nutrition. So ultimately, what is the threshold? Like how much is too much or how much can you actually take? I think it's going to depend on the individual here. There's several key risk factors that can increase the likelihood of NSAIDs creating this toxicity or problems in your kidneys, including, you know, older age, pre-existing renal problems and use of other drugs or medications that are also going to be decreasing the blood flow to the kidneys. This is where things like heart failure or even liver cirrhosis can come in. Now, these are pretty severe problems that the average person is not experiencing, but it is definitely a threshold of things going on. You may have experienced something like a heart attack and you have decreased cardiac output, mildly decreased cardiac output. And so, therefore, the amount of blood that's going out through the arteries is decreased. And then you're out working in the middle of the summer and you hurt your back, but you still have to complete the job. And you take an ibuprofen, now you're dehydrated, you continue taking ibuprofen, you continue to be dehydrated. Well, this, these are the kinds of situations that can lead to problems especially the more often you're taking it and the more dehydrated you are. I had a patient that was perfectly healthy, but taking ibuprofen daily for shoulder pain, and he never had kidney issues before, and his kidney function based on creatinine levels deteriorated significantly. And when he came in, we, I asked him about his use of ibuprofen and other things like that, and he said he was definitely taking that. We stopped it. Kidney function went right back up to normal again. So in a lot of cases, if it's short-lived, your kidney function will rebound. But it's still important, obviously, to be cautious, which is why I'm doing this video. So what about you? Are you at risk and you don't even know it? Well, let me just lay out some of my recommendations so that you do avoid any problems with your kidneys. So the idea with this is to use the lowest possible dose for the shortest period of time. You want it to be effective. You want to actually get something out of it but you want to do it for the shortest duration and take the lowest dose possible. Now, for some of you, that may be obvious, but a lot of times people just look at the back of the bottle and say, oh, let me take the dose that's on there. You don't have to necessarily take the recommended dose. You can go lower than the recommended dose, but you do want it to actually be effective for why you're taking it. Sometimes smaller doses can do the trick without necessarily going to the higher dose for, so keep that in mind. And then of course, avoiding long-term use, you know, couple days here and there. That's how these medications are designed to be used. So when you're using them day in and day out, you want to make sure you're getting your kidney function tested to make sure you're not having a negative impact. If you are taking them on a daily basis, that means you have to hydrate even more to make sure your kidneys are getting enough perfusion to the cells that are there. If you are taking them on a more regular basis, it might be important to give your body a break periodically, maybe once or twice a week, where you just don't take that particular NSAID at all and maybe you switch to a different class. You should also be monitoring your blood pressure to ensure, one, that your blood pressure isn't getting too high because as that renal artery constricts, it also raises your blood pressure. But you also want to make sure that your kidneys are getting adequate 
blood pressure to those tissues as well. So if you have super low blood pressure for whatever reason, maybe you're over medicated or dehydrated, that can also lead to problems. So we want to make sure you have adequate blood volume there too. So that's why sometimes when you're really dehydrated, you want to also take some electrolytes too to make sure the volume of fluid in the blood will go back to its normal normal range. So, so the idea is to protect your kidneys while maintaining adequate pain management. And while ibuprofen, of course, is very useful and helpful at managing pain and inflammation, it's important to recognize the risks there too, which we laid out, especially if you fall into any of those categories, the risk categories that we mentioned. And you want to discuss this with your doctor if you are taking more ibuprofen. Sometimes they don't know what's going on and if you don't mention it to them, they may not recognize to look more carefully at your kidneys. And always use the lowest dose for the shortest duration of time to mitigate any possible risks here. So hopefully this video helps you better understand the truth about ibuprofen and your kidneys. If you have questions on this topic, please ask them in the comment section. Happy to answer your questions. If you want a more nuanced, detailed answer, consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your question. For those of you wondering what normal kidney function looks like, you might wanna check out this video right here. And until next time, stay healthy and we'll see you soon.